Hello, 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 everybody. This is Isaac uh, uh, on the Summer Bible Channel. Uh, today I am going to do a different um, than what I used to do. So I am going to display the lesson here, and I am going to explain you uh, a summary of what is really in this lesson. Though, so the title of this lesson is "Seeing the Goldsmith Face." Seeing the Goldsmith Face. So the Memory text is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So uh, the lesson starts with this introduction. My uh, Karl Mikhail took a group of children to a traditional goldsmith in India. In the middle of a, a charcoal fire was a curved roof tile. On the tile was a mixture of salt, tamarind fruit and brick dust. Embedded in the mixture was gold. As the fire devoured the mixture, the gold became purer. The goldsmith took the gold out with tongs and if it was not pure enough, he replaced it in the fire with a new mixture. But each time the gold was replaced, the hurt was increased. The group asked, how do you know when the gold is purified? He replied, when I can see my face in it. Oh la la. This is a, a very, very good story of purifying a God. God is seeking to purify us, to refine us like God, to transform us into his image. That is an astonishing goal. And it seems even more astonishing that a Christian-like character is developed as in us only as we pass through life crucibles so this week friend we are going to learn um, what the lord does suffering have in the purifying process so how do we understand all this in the context of a uh, great controversy so let us see the lesson of sunday in his image there is a a, a good question here um so it says for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. So, in the beginning, God made us in his image, but that image has been corrupted by sin. So, it is obvious that we all have been corrupted, yet God desires is to restore us to what we should have been originally. Original. This is where our verse today fits in. It reveres God's plan to that those who submit their life to the Holy Spirit may be conformed to the image of His Son. So, as a Christian, we must never forget that we are in the midst of unfolding all around us. So, the battle takes many shapes and and is manifested um, in many ways. And though much is hidden, we can understand that as followers of Christ, we have a part to play in this drama and can bring honor to Christ through our life. So let us see the Monday's lesson, which is faith amid the refining fire. So faith amid the refining fire. So refining fire. So amid that refining fire, so there is a faith. So. Even amid the terrible trials, Job, so we see Job here, the, 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 the story of Job, Job trusted in the Lord. Despite everything, Job was determined to endure. And one of the things that kept him persevering was God, not a gold medal, rather he was looking into the future and he realized that if he held on to the God, so he would come out the better of it. So he would come like God. So. Job was really suffered, suffered so much that he was refined, refined like a god put in the fire. And then when he came out, he was really more stronger. So the question is, do you fear the fire? Do you worry about the heat, the heat that circumstances generate? Perhaps as with Job, the heat of God seems unexplainable. It may be the difficulty of adjusting to a new job or a new home. It could be having to survive or ill treatment at work or even with your own family. It could be the illness or financial loss. Hard as 
is to understand so God can use these trials to refine you and purify you and brings bring out his image in your character. So being proven to be a to be God seems to be an incentive for job here. Some think to fix his eyes upon and that help us pull him through his trouble. It is a powerful testimony to his character already that amid all the pain and the suffering, he was able to sense the reality of the purifying process as a whole. However much he didn't understand, he knew that these trials would refine him. So let us see the second, uh, the Tuesday lesson that is just Jesus' last word. Oh yes, Jesus was in Jerusalem about to die, according to Matthew uh, Gospel. Jesus' last teaching hour before Passover is spent telling his disciple parables, including the one about the ten virgin and the sheep in the gods. These stories are related to the way we should live as we wait for Jesus to come. So, we should notice that um, this is really very important about this ten virgin. Many commentators point out that the oil, so you remember that virgin has to, uh, five virgin uh, could not have uh, oil, sufficient oil, so they were kicked out, and the other were really accepted to enter into a king palace. So Ellen White agrees, but also says that this oil is a symbol for character, and that is something no one can acquire for us. So this is really something that a character. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, it is. Uh, some people they say is the Holy Spirit is compared to this uh, uh, this oil, and. This symbol also is a kind of a character that only Jesus can give us. So uh, let us see now the, 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 the Wednesday lesson is saying the wise, the wise. So uh, let us read Daniel uh, uh, chapter, uh, let us see what is in cha Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. So we can read it and see what is the context, what time. I invite your friend to read that chapter. Chapter. So uh, Daniel is told that Jesus, before Jesus come, there will be a time of distress or unequal at any other time of history. So in Daniel chapter 12, 3, 10, we are given a depiction of the righteousness and the wicked during this time. Notice how wicked mm -hmm. shall do wickedly in contrast to righteousness to the righteousness mm -hmm. so who in the verse 3 shine brightly perhaps because they have they give been purified made spotless and refined during this time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time in contrast to the wicked do not understand uh, but the righteous are wise and do understand so we need to understand the the, 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 the Lord's word and in, if you understand then then or if we cannot understand we should ask God to help us understand it so the crucial point is that here we are given a depiction of people who have been through a refining and the purifying process so my question is are you being in this process I, I can say yes I am I am in that process because Every day's life, a daily life is purifying, is troubles, is sorrow, is sometimes also uh, good news. So we need, we need really to go through that process in order to come out victorious. So let us see the character and the community. That is the verse, that's the uh, lesson of Thursday, July 21. A song goes like this, I am a rock, I am an island. Have you ever felt like that, wanting to stand alone? You might even have heard people say, well, my work with God is a private affair. It's not seeming I want to talk about. So, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16, Paul is pointing something here important. So, what, the, what role does he give? 
here for a community. When Paul writes to, to the Ephesians, he describes the church as body. Jesus is the head and his people make up the rest. If you look at the Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13, you will notice that the ultimate purpose of living in such community it is to experience the whole measure of the fullness of Christ and for what we need each other. It says is possible to be a Christian all alone. Indeed, as for many people through the centuries who have been ridiculed or persecuted, standing alone if is often unavoidable. It is powerful witness to the power of God that men and women do not buckle under the pressure that surround them. However, why it is true, Paul emphasizes a critical truth. Ultimately, we experience and reveal the fullness of Christ when we are working together in fellowship with each other. So, it's nice to be to be nice when you are by yourself or with stranger, but it is much harder to be nice to people you either know really well or don't like. This means that we, when we still show these people grace and the kindness. We provide in an irresistible witness to the truth about God. Friend, uh, let us see. Uh, this is important um, uh, comment on Friday, which is on Friday. Character building is the most important work ever entrusted to human beings, and never before was it was. It diligent study so important as now. Never was any previous generation called to meet issues some momentous. Never before we young men and young women confronted by perils so great as confront them today. So we see it in education page 20 to 25. A friend in the parable, uh, the foolish um, virgin are represented as begging for oil and falling, failing to receive it at their request. This is symbolic of those who have not prepared themselves by developing, developing a character to stand in a time of crisis. It is as if they should go to their neighbors and say, give me your character or I shall be lost. Those that were wise could not impart the oil to the flickering lamps of the foolish virgins. Character is not transferable, friends. Character is not transferable. It is not, it's not to be bought or sold. It is to be acquired. The Lord has given to every individual an opportunity to obtain a righteous character through the hours of probation, but he has not provided a way by which one human agent may impart to another the character which has developed by going through that um, uh, hard experience, experience, by learning the lesson from the great teacher so that he can manifest the patience and the trial and exercise faith so that he can remove mountains of impossibility. So I am going to finish by just by just reading this important question is just one of them. So what does the character building mean? How can you do this? So ask that question and try to respond. How much of a visible priority is character building within your own life and your church community? Very, very, very important. So, uh, friend, this is the end of this lesson. I invite you, friend, to go and to read and understand and study this lesson as it is very important for your life. God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye.